Thanks, Chris, and hello to everybody again. So I'll be talking a little bit about if you think you've got pasture dieback, what should you be doing and what are some of the management options? Firstly, if you think you've got pasture dieback, uh, please um, help us out by reporting it. Um, so that can be done a couple of ways, either calling the exotic plant pest hotline, which is the 1800 number on the screen, uh, emailing via security at that email address and sending us a picture of what you're seeing. Um, if you head to our New South Wales DPI website, there is an online form where you can also uh, report DILAC. And we, the reason we're asking people to report it is so we can get an idea of where dieback's occurring in New South Wales and how fast it's moving. If you report DILAC, um, your property won't be quarantined. It really is just to assist us to know where dieback's occurring. Uh, next slide, please. One of the most common questions we're getting is if you've got an area affected by dieback, what can you sow in that area? So I'm going to talk pretty broadly today because I know we've got listeners from a number of different areas in New South Wales, but I would really advise you go and talk to your local advisor and get some advice that's specific for your region and find out what might be the best solution for your property. Firstly, we're advising that people don't re-sow perennial grasses. As we've already heard today, it's the uh, tropical or um, summer growing species that seem to be most affected by dieback. Um, and we don't really know if you re-sow them, whether they'll get affected again. So the risk is too high. So we're really suggesting that people don't re-sow um, tropical perennial grasses in dieback affected areas. As for temperate perennial grasses, we're really not sure what the effects of dieback will be on these species yet. Um, these species don't really occur in Queensland, so we're talking about the likes of Phalarius, uh, Coxfoot and Fescue. Um, so we don't know whether they're affected by dieback yet or not. So again, we're advising that people don't sow any perennial grasses, temperate or tropical, into a dieback affected area. So what can you sow? So as it's already been mentioned, broadleaf species aren't affected by dieback. Um, so this includes legumes. So it might be your clovers, your vetches. Um, some perennial options include lucerne, uh, desmanthus. Uh, again, depends on the region as to what's going to be suited for your situation. Another option is winter, winter cereals. Um, a number of different cereals have either forage or dual purpose options, which are suitable for grazing. Uh, so talking about oats, uh, maybe wheat, barley, um, triacali. Again, um, depending on your situation is going to depend on what is best suited to you. Uh, brassicas are another broadleaf species, which um, we don't think are affected by dieback. Uh, so this includes your forage brassicas, your leafy turnips, um, and there's a number of different other brassicas. Uh, again, depending on region, sometimes they're suited to autumn sowing, sometimes they're suited to spring sowing. So again, best to get local advice there. Another thing that could be an option in some areas is chicory. Um, depending on variety, you might get a couple of years out of your chicory. Um, yeah, and it's another good high quality feed option. Annual grasses, I've put a question mark around this because again, not entirely sure what the effect is going to be on annual grasses of dieback. Um, particularly thinking about annual ryegrass, we're not quite sure. Uh, but we are aware that on some places, particularly on the north coast, um, there's not a lot of arable land, so it is difficult to get seed out. Um, and, and annual ryegrass, broadcasting annual ryegrass might be an option in that area. But just be aware that we're not entirely sure if it'll, there is a risk because we're not entirely sure if it'll be affected. Um, so don't go out and sow their latest and greatest variety. Look for the cheaper options and just be aware there's a small, there could be a risk that it might be affected. Um, yeah, so just be aware. Next slide, please. 
Uh, so options for controlling mealybug, as has already been mentioned, the APVMA have released an emergency permit. Um, you can see the permit number there on the screen. For the use of spirotetramat um, on pasture mealybugs. Uh, so this chemical is registered as Movento in Australia. Uh, it's a systemic insecticide, so you need to have green leaf on the plant um, for the insecticide to be uptaken by the plant and then for the mealybugs to come and chew on that plant and ingest the insecticide. Uh, so yeah, the permit's for mealybug in a mixed pasture sort. So it's important to know that you've actually got mealybug before you go around spraying um, Movento. And uh, another thing is it has a 14 day grazing withhold period. So that's just something you need to be aware of. If you are thinking of using Movento, um, I suggest you yeah, look at the chemical label and the permit uh, released by APVMA before using the chemical. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, just I'll touch briefly on this one. Um, there's been a few cases in Queensland where pasture dieback has um, seems to have radiated out from where pasture grass hay, um, for example, rose grass hay, has either been stored or spread or fed out. So we are suggesting if people are looking at buying hay, um, that you know where your hay is coming from, particularly if it's pasture grass hay. Um, yeah, and try and avoid getting hay out of dieback affected areas. If you're bringing hay onto your property, um, try and restrict and monitor where that hay is stored and fed out for any changes, um, any signs of pasture dieback. If you have pasture dieback affected pasture, uh, don't bale your hay and sell it because you'll be at risk at um, transferring dieback to someone else's property. And finally, it's always a good idea to keep records of where your hay is coming from, when it's come on, where it's been fed out. Uh, next slide, please. Um, one of the ways to help minimise the risk of getting pasture dieback is just to have good biosecurity practice on your property. So that's come clean, go clean, particularly for any machinery, contractors and things coming on and off your property. Um, Keep an eye out on your pastures and crops, looking for anything unusual, uh, particularly following significant rainfall. And especially for dieback, that's uh, in spring, in summer and in autumn. If you're sourcing for fodder, try and use uh, reputable suppliers and really try and find out where the hay is coming from. And again, as I mentioned before, just keep good records of what's um, happening on your farm. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so where can you go for more information on pasture dieback? As has already been mentioned before, um, you can head to our New South Wales DPI website and search pasture dieback. Uh, for information on what's happening in Queensland, uh, head to the Future Beef website and again search pasture dieback. And MLA also have some information on their website. And finally, once again, if you suspect you've got pasture dieback, um, please help us out in knowing where it is and how fast it's moving um, by giving the 1800 number a call or emailing the biosecurity email. Um, thank you and I'll hand over to Chris again.